Democratic chapter, the first couple of exercises will be revision. So, what we need to know, okay, what we need to know, like, let's go through that. I'm not necessarily doing the question with you, but I will go through the concept with you. So, the first exercise is talking about expansion and collecting uh, like terms. So, the formula we need to know is uh, those two. Okay, there are quadratic formulas. That's the perfect square, a plus b square, and a minus b square. I think like most of you will know this formula, but when you do the expansion, a lot of you may forget about the 2ab term. I see a lot of students they are doing too quick and then they're just missing the 2ab term. So remember a plus b squared will expand to three terms. It will expand to three terms. So that's the two perfect square. Uh, that's just distributive law, so don't need to worry about that one. It's just by ex uh, um, simple expansion. And the important one is this one. This one will be very helpful to do factorization. Okay, a squared minus b squared. When we're trying to do expansion, that's really helpful. But we don't have a squared plus b squared. Okay, we can't factorize that one. A squared plus b squared, we can't factorize that one. I think students are always trying to do, oh, that's a plus b squared. So they just forget a plus b squared needs to expand to three terms. That's just some silly mistake, but just be aware of this. Um, the next one is factorizing. So how do you factorize quadratic? How do you factorize quadratic? So, so the method I use is the cross multiplication method. If you has an, uh, have any other method, that should be fine. For example, uh, talking about the first one. I'm looking at the first term's coefficient, which is a 1. And I'm looking at the, set, uh, the constant, which is negative 22. I'm trying to um, manipulate with the numbers to make the 9 in the middle. So for a 1, I can only have 1 times 1. But for a negative 22, I can have 2 and 11, but one of that needs to be negative. So I will make, because I need a positive 9, I will say I put a negative 2 and a positive 11. Okay, so you times those two will give you negative 22. And I'll cross multiply them. That will give me negative 2. That will give me 11. I will add them. When you add them, that will give you a positive 9. So that is the middle number, which means you are doing the right thing. Then we read horizontally, you have 1x and a constant minus 2. I have 1x and a constant 11. So the factorized form will be y equals to x minus 2 and x plus 11. So that's the method I use. If you have any method you're familiar with, that's fine with it. And I just talk about this quadratic. I just remember one thing that students always confuse about or like make mistakes. So give you an equation. For example, y equals to 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. Okay, this is not equivalent to x squared plus 2x plus 3. You can't divide the two here. I think why say this most of you will know, okay, that's the wrong thing because you can't divide by two. But when you do exams, when you do tests, actually like about a third of the student will make the silly mistake. You just divide two. You are trying to divide the two on one side, but you haven't divided the two on the other side. So this is not the equation. Yes? But if you put y over two. Yeah, that's y over two, that's fine. Yeah. But like you most of the time will make y to be the yeah. subject. You don't have y over two. So we can't do that. So instead of doing that, we need to make two to be a factor. Okay, that's the right thing. Okay, that's the right thing. You can't just simply divide that two. But if we have two x squared plus four x plus six equals to zero. Then we can say x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals to 0. That's the right thing. Okay, you have divided 2 on both sides of the equation. That's all right. Okay, that's all right. Just some, just some place you may make mistakes, just let you know and be aware of this. Uh, this is not the worst case. I think the worst case is when you have half, like y equals to half x plus 3 over 2x plus 4, something like that. And then students would directly give me, oh, that's x squared plus 3x plus 8. 
when you have a factor two, it's not really that bad. But when you have a half values, and they will just oh, great, we have two at the bottom. We can times that by two. So that's a really bad mistake. So do not make that mistake because that is totally enlarged by two times. Okay, enlarged by two times. So that's something you need to pay attention. Uh, come back to the factorize. So for this one, the right hand side one. So that's easy to factorize. So for this one, let's think about this. We have negative uh, 15x squared minus x and plus 6. So okay, for me, I like to keep the negative outside. I want to make the first term uh, x squared positive. So I will normally take the negative out. Well, it's okay you don't take it out, but it's easy for me to see it and I put the negative out. So still I'll look at the first number and the constant okay the first coefficient and the constant trying to make a positive one okay trying to make a positive one so for 15 i can have three times five or i can have one times 15. so i will put two smaller number like the closer number one 15 is too large because i just need a one and for six okay for six i can have two and three or one and six so again i will try the two and three first okay so this closer number so 2 and 3, you can see if I have a 3 times with 3, I will have a 9. If I have a 2 times with the 5, I will have a 10. 10 and 9 will give you a 1. So that may be the right combination. So I will write 2 here because it's cross multiplication. But one of this number will be negative. So let's have a look. I need a positive 1, so I need a negative 9. I will put the 3 as a negative 3. So I will have 10 and that's negative 9. I'll plus them. That will give me a 1. That will give me a 1. So therefore, this will be equals to negative. Don't forget the negative sign. You can't divide by a negative. You can't change everything to positive. So you need to keep that negative sign there. And then I have 3x plus 2 and 5x minus 3. This is still trial and error, but if you have done a lot of practice, you can see directly so for example i can see okay the right combination must be like that you may try 115 at the beginning and it doesn't work so you need to go back and to retry another pair so that would be negative 3x plus 2 and 5x minus 3 for the factorize but if you have any other method you feel comfortable with just use your own method okay so for 3c so quadratic equations you need to solve quadratic equations okay so to solve quadratic you will go factorize first okay so go for factorize first so you go factorization i'll go uh give you some time later so i'll just pass that uh for graphing for graph e uh, quadratic equations we have two methods to do it well turning point four First of all, it's completing square and make it into turning point form. But second is, if you see it's easy to factorize, we can factorize this first and then have two x intercept or one if it's just like a, a touching case. So I find two x intercepts and then find the middle x value which find the turning point. Okay, which to find the turning point. So to sketch a graph, we must label x, y intercept we must label turning point okay we must label x y intercept and we must label the turning point for quadratic so the turning point is the key feature it's not enough for you just find the x intercepts you must find the turning point at the same time you must make sure where is the turning point so i will recommend turning point form but if you think oh it's really easy to factorize you can factorize it first and then find the two x intercept find the middle that is what is the x value of the turning point okay that's year 10 that's year 10 like what we learned in the quadratic topic so you can graph that later yes uh, negative b over 2a negative b over 2a is the x intercept form x turning point x turning point so minus b over 2a. Well, I don't really like to remember a lot of formula. 
So to but you can you can use that one, but it's not. Yeah, you give the equation, you can directly find the x value of the turning point. I sub that in to find the y turning point. Um, that's the turning point for, and if you think about completing square, okay, so this question asks you specifically to complete square first and then solve the equation. So, okay, I'll go through this with you. So, we have x squared minus 5x plus 2. Okay, x squared minus 5x plus 2. So, Okay, so for all the solving, we need to factorize in the end. What we need to do is x squared. I will keep the first term, the x squared term. I will keep the x term. But I will add half of the b value squared. Half of the b value squared. And subtract half of the b value squared. And whatever constant you have, you just add it at the back. So that's the way how you can complete square. But before you complete square, there must be one x squared. You can't have multiple x squared. If you have multiple x squared, you need to take common factor first. If there's a, for example, two x squared, you need to take the two as a common factor and then keep going with that. For example, if we have two x squared plus three x plus four, Okay, so what we need to do is take 2 out. x squared plus 3 over 2x plus 2. That's what we need to do for the first step. And then complete square for the inside. Okay, for inside. Don't deal with that too. So you can't have multiple x squared before you complete square. So how we complete square? We add half of the b squared and subtract half of the b squared. And then whatever constant you have, just still leave it there. So the first three terms you can complete square. And the last two constant, you just add them. Okay, you just add them or subtract them. So for completing square, I will take the x from the first term, take the sign for the second term, and take the value and the square. So what we will have is x minus 5 over 2 squared. x minus 5 over 2 and then the whole thing squared. And that's a minus 25 over 4 plus 8 over 4 equals to 0. So that's a x minus 5 over 2 squared minus 17 over 4 equals to 0. Uh, yeah, equals to 0. So if I want to keep factorize that, that's just a number. I can always make the number into square form. So I can make that a uh, square root 17 over 2 and then put a square on that. Because I want to use a square minus b square formula. I want to use a square minus b square formula. So a plus b times a minus b equals to zero okay so what is a this is a this is b so a plus b times a minus b and then we can use the non-factor law each bracket can be zero and so for x so x minus 5 over 2 plus that equals to zero or x minus 5 over 2 minus root 17 over 2 equals to 0. So x equals to 5 over 2 minus 17 root 17 over 2 or x equals to 5 over 2 plus root 17 over 2. Move the value to the other side. Okay, so uh, I'll focus on 
solving e quadratic inequality is this is the most important thing we will do today so i'll go through this part two first because why it is a little bit hard to think about uh the number is a little bit hard it's not it's the same uh method anyone have you learned in year 10 to solve quadratic inequalities have you ever learned that in year 10 no a little bit the last exercise a little bit do you remember a little bit from that yeah so it's okay, so we just, I just assume you don't know any idea of that. So write, write something above. So except linear inequality, all the other inequalities needs to be solved by sketching graphs. Okay, so you need to use graphs to help you to solve other inequality. So except linear inequality. So linear, you can directly move all the numbers or divide whatever you need. You can directly solve for it. But except linear inequality, all the other types of inequality, you need to solve it by sketching graph. Okay, I'll show you how to sketch the graph, but that's something you must remember. Because I find year 12 students, they still don't know how to solve quadratic inequality. So that's something that really surprised me. So we need to use quadratic graph to help us to solve that. But before we solve that, what you want to do first, if you solve that inequality? Yes, Molly? How do what do you mean by take out negative seven? Uh factorize? Over? Uh, yeah, so factorize that. So negative seven x squared minus seven um, x plus six less than zero. And what you can do after that? Divide? divide by both sides negative you don't want to deal with a big number so you can divide the negative seven on both sides so this side left with that and zero divided by whatever is still zero what sign we have larger greater because we have divide by a negative number okay we need to flip the sign so become a bigger okay so for other inequality one side must be zero okay we can't move the six to the other side we must leave the six on the left hand side we need a zero okay need a zero on one side so move everything to the other side and keep the zero so that equation is greater than zero okay that equation is greater than zero um, expression now the next step for quadratic will be factorized okay will be factorized so I want to factorize the left hand side. So if you can factorize the left hand side. If you factorize the left hand side, that will be x minus 1 and x minus 6. All right, let's think about something first. I'll give the left hand side another name. So let's say y equals to that. Okay, I'll make an equation for you. y equals to that. So if it's y equals to that, okay, something equals to that. So what I want to solve now is y greater than zero. Right? So y is equivalent to that. And now I want that greater than zero so it is same as y greater than zero okay now let's so let's sketch this equation y equals to x minus one and x minus six you don't need to find the turning point you just need to label the x-intercept for me okay just label the x-intercept for me so just give me a really rough graph like really uh you can just show the basic shape and the x-intercept what all i need is x-intercept You don't need y-intercept, just really brief graph. Yes? No, because the negative gone already. Uh, with the y negative 7 already yes the most original graph is a negative graph but i have the y negative 7 okay so what we are solving is this inequality here it's a positive inequality 
and it's a positive projected graph. So the top line become the false line and we are just deal with the false line. Okay, so on your graph, on your graph, which part of the graph do you think is y greater than zero? Above what? Above the x-axis. So the two parts which is called great y is greater than zero. So the got a y value greater than zero is this part of the graph and this part of the graph. Should I include the point one and six or not? No, that's equals to zero. So I'll have open circle here and open circle here. I can't take those two points. Because those two points is when it's equals to zero. If you have greater or equal, yes, you can include that point. If it's uh, absolute greater or smaller, you can't include those two points. Okay, let me know, like those parts of graph is y greater than zero. So what x corresponding to those two parts of the graph? What x give you those two parts? Yes? <coughs> x is less than one? Yep, and x greater than six, like that's the end. Can you see that? If you draw vertical line down, if you draw vertical line, can you see the x values? Can you see what gives you the x value? Like for all this part of the graph, those are the correct x, okay, the good x. So those x can give you the red graph. And those x will be the answer. So your answer will be that. So your answer will be that. Any questions? That's how we solve quadratic inequality. Well, later we'll learn polynomial inequality as well, but it will be exactly the same way to do it. We need to recognize, okay, which part of the graph is we want. Okay, we want the top two parts. And then what x can give me those two parts of the graph? That will be x less than one and x greater than six. Any questions for that? Okay, if you don't have any question, I will leave this here. Okay, give you a hint. The factorized form is already here. Okay, this question is the same as the top question, if you can see that. Give you a hint there. Uh, just don't refactorize it. It's quite long to factorize. We have factorized it already. And, okay, the last bit of today, revision will be the discriminant and the general quadratic formula okay discriminant and general quadratic formula so quadratic formula will be those two i just cut that from the book so minus b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac over 2a i think yesterday we have talked about quadratic, uh, the discriminant one of the questions talked about the discriminant so for discriminant, let's, uh, it's here, okay, it's already here. So discriminant less than zero, which means there's no real solution. Okay, if you think about the graph wise, okay, think about the graph, which means no x intercepts. Okay, if discriminant less than zero, when you sketch a graph, like, yes, there's no, like when it equals to zero, which means there's no real solution. But also on the graph, it means no x-intercept. Okay, there's no x-intercept. When discriminant equals to zero, the quadratic will have one real solution. This means on graph, it touch x-axis. It touch the x-axis. What means by touch the x-axis? That's touch the x-axis. The turning point is on the x-axis. Okay, the turning point is on the x-axis. So when discriminant greater than zero, there will be two real solution. This means two x-intercepts. You have two x-intercepts on graph. So it will be something like that. 
no x will be this or that okay so that's on graph there's also meaning for the graph it's not only means the number of solutions so it also means the in number of intersections on the quadratic graph So use quadratic formula to solve for x. You can do that by yourself, but I'll give you a hint. Times two on both sides first. If it's an equation, I'll times two on both sides because I'll make the number easier and the ABC will be all integers. But it's okay to just use A equals to half, B equals to negative three, and C equals to nine over two. That's fine, but it's just make your calculation harder. So what I'll do is times two on both sides of the equation. And for the last one, okay, I'll ask you to try the last one, like I'll finish here, but I'll ask you to try the last one because this one is a really good one. And also this is talking discriminant. Okay, if you talk about the number of intersections, so you need to think about the discriminant. Discriminant less than zero or greater than zero or like equals to zero. Then I think this question is you need to solve for quadratic inequality. That's what we learn like above. Is not inequality. Okay, so you solve quadratic inequality, use the knowledge we learned for the previous page. Try that question, uh, try this one first, okay? When we when I finish, try that one first, which is a good question. Uh, any problems so far? I'll stop here and give you the rest 10 minutes to do this one. Any questions? No? Okay, so you can do your own exercise. <coughs>